Member from York Centre. Mr. Speaker, February the 20th was the 50th anniversary of the cancellation of the Avril CF 105 Aero project. It was 50 years ago that the production of the world's most technologically advanced supersonic interceptor aircraft came to an abrupt end. This political decision to scrap the Aero program cost over 40,000 jobs across Canada, including more than 14,000 jobs in the Toronto region. Five arrows were built in fluid speeds exceeding Mach 1, the speed of sound. One of them logged the maximum stabilized speed of Mach 1.98, which is twice the speed of sound. A sixth arrow, the first Mark II model, was completed and was awaiting its new engines, the Orenda Iroquois. If it had flown, it would without doubt set new world records, but it wasn't to be. The government not only cancelled the program, but ordered the scrapping of the five completed planes plus the five that were in production. They also ordered the destruction of all blueprints, technical and research data so that there would be no memory of the arrow. The resulting brain drain made significant contributions to the U.S. Apollo space program, which culminated in the first human landing on the moon, July 22, 1969. The arrow's legacy after a few decades is the current global leadership position of Canada's aerospace industry, the fourth largest in the world. On February the 23rd, we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the first powered flight in Canada, by J.A.D. McCurdy with Alexander Graham Bell's famous Silver Dart at Baddock, Nova Scotia. Last week, we also launched the new Canada Air and Space Museum, formerly the Toronto Aerospace Museum at Downsview Park in my riding of York Centre. The museum's star attraction is the only full-scale museum-quality aero replica in existence. Come and see it. <laughs>